today, we are diving deeper into gene technology, building on what we have already learned. Without further ado, let's get into it. Electrophoresis. Electrophoresis is like genetic swapping method. It separates molecules like DNA or proteins based on their size and such using an electric field. Smaller lighter molecules move faster towards the positive electrode while larger heavier ones move slower. And this helps scientists analyze and identify specific molecules in a sample. Using electrophoresis in genetic fingerprint. In genetic fingerprinting, electrophoresis is like a DNA sorting machine. Imagine each person's DNA is a unique puzzle. Electrophoresis helps us piece together this puzzle by separating the DNA fragments based on their size. So first, what we are going to do is we collect DNA samples from different people. Then we chop up the DNA into smaller fragments using special scissors enzymes. And these fragments are loaded onto a gel like spreading jelly on bread. Next, we turn on an electric current which acts like a gentle breeze pushing the DNA fragments through the gel. Smaller pieces get blown further, while larger pieces stay closer to where they started. And this creates a pattern of band on the gel, like lines on the fingerprint. By comparing this pattern, we can see how similar or different the DNA is between individuals. It's like matching pieces of a puzzle to see who they belong to, helping us solve mysteries and answer important questions about genetic. The second one is using electrophoresis in DNA sequencing. Electrophoresis in DNA sequencing is like sorting DNA pieces by size in gel. Imagine the gel as a sieve and DNA pieces as a different size number. By using electrophoresis in DNA sequencing, when an electric current is applied, smaller marble, shorter DNA pieces move faster through the gel, while larger one, longer DNA pieces move slower. And this separation helps to read the sequence of DNA bases, like reading a sentence by arranging words in order. So by analyzing where each DNA is end up in a gel, scientists can determine the sequence of bases, which is crucial for understanding genetic information. Let's look into the cystic fibrosis. Cystic fibrosis is a genetic condition caused by mutation in the gene that codes for a protein called CFPR. Think of CFPR as a gatekeeper in our cells, helping to move salt and water in and out of cells to keep the body weaker sweat and digestive juice thin and slippery. When there are mutations in the CFTR gene, it can cause the CFTR protein to not work properly. And this leads to thick, sticky mucus building up in the lungs, digestive system, and other organs. And this thick mucus can clutch airway in the lungs, making it hard to breathe and causing infections. It can also block tubes in the pancreas, preventing digestive enzyme from reaching the intestine, which affect the body ability to break down and absorb nutrients from food. In simpler terms, cystic fibrosis happens when the body's gatekeeper protein doesn't do its jobs right, which causing thick mucus to cause problems in the lung and digestive system. Let's look into gene therapy for cystic fibrosis. 
Gene therapy for cystic fibrosis is a treatment that aims to fix the underlying genetic problem causing the disease. Cystic fibrosis is caused by a single gene mutation and it is a serious illness with limited treatment options. Gene therapy tries to include a healthy version of the gene into the patient's cells to help elevate systems and improve quality of life. Scientists have tried two methods to treat cystic, cystic fibrosis by putting a healthy CFPR gene into a person's cells. They use a harmless virus to carry the normal gene into the cell in the person's respiratory system and the virus acts like a delivery vehicle entering the cells and introducing the gene to them. And the second approach is involve putting the gene into tiny balls made of lipids and protein called liposomes. They are sprayed as a mist into the person's respiratory passages. Both the virus and liposomes are like carrier call vectors that transfer the gene into the person's cells. In both methods, some cells in the respiratory passage dictate in a healthy gene. Since the normal gene is stronger dominant, just one copy in a cell is enough to make normal mucus. There is no need to get rid of the faulty gene first because it's weaker recessive. Gene therapy faces several challenges. Only a small number of cells pick up the healthy gene resulting in only those cells producing normal mucus. And it was only successful in getting cells in the respiratory passages to take up the healthy gene, not cells in the pancreas or reproductive organs. The cells on the surface of the respiratory passages don't last long, meaning the treatment would need to be repeated every few weeks. And using viruses as a carrier, carrier lead to some people developing severe lung infection. That's all for today's presentation. And please don't forget to subscribe to John Study Law YouTube channel. By the way, thank you very much for your cooperation and support. Hope to see you in the next presentation slide. And wish you all the best in your studies.